Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on, do it. Do it! So from the very moment that I saw the trailer for Morbius, it looked like a dull piece of shit. And going in, I was expecting a very generic movie-going experience. And in a lot of aspects, I was definitely correct about both of those things. But the bottom line is this. Other than hearing about Will Smith smacking Chris Rock for the hundredth time... What is the five fingers? Say to the face! Slap! All week, all I've been seeing are these early reactions from Morbius that make it sound like it's one of the worst things ever created. And I have to be honest, I don't necessarily agree with that. Now that doesn't necessarily make it a good movie either, but let me get to my point and you'll see what I mean. All those bad reactions to Morbius are a result of once again the MCU effect. Whenever a non-MCU comic book movie is released, people like to pile on and make it sound like it's somehow worse than it actually is. Why? Because it's not up to their high MCU standards. In reality, quality-wise, this movie isn't all that much different than what the MCU puts out. Lots of CGI, basic-ass storytelling, and of course, end credit sequences. All in an effort to set up the next movie, rather than just focusing on this movie. Does any of this sound familiar? Whoopie fucking do. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. To act like Morbius is somehow leaps and bounds worse than anything coming out of the MCU, especially recently, then that person is probably seriously misguided. Or at least has fan goggles on. In fact, I'll take it a step further. I would rather watch Morbius again than I would ever want to watch Eternals or Shang-Chi. If for no other reason, Morbius is just a little bit more tonally appealing to me. And of course, the typical MCU-like cringe comedy not bogging it down helps a lot as well. Did you ever heard of the healing power of laughter? Tonally, I'd say Morbius is pretty close to the original Venom. So if you are one of those people who thoroughly enjoyed Venom, you might like this. Now that I've got that out of the way, in terms of how Morbius fits into the greater comic book movie conversation, looking at Morbius on its own, it is simply a movie that does not need to exist. Much like most of the comic book movies these days. We've gotten into this space where studios feel like every single character they have the rights to deserves their own movie. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. And I'm sorry, but it just doesn't work that way. Morbius isn't the type of character that has the same mass appeal as a character like Venom, for instance. You could have used him as a villain in a Spider-Man movie or a Blade movie, but giving him his own space and telling a story in an hour and 44 minutes that could have been told in a 20-minute origin in someone else's movie just seems like overkill at this point. But that's pretty much where we are for the entire genre. We give them what they want! The whole trend is becoming progressively tiresome and I think we just need to move away from it. Morbius follows Dr. Michael Morbius who has a rare blood disease and he performs an experimental procedure on himself that is based on his work with vampire bats that effectively turns him into a living vampire. I think Jared Leto is one of those actors who does have a lot of talent but he just picks really shitty movies sometimes. And yes he did go full Jared Leto taking himself to the physical limits and making himself look like the Olsen twins for some of these sick Morbius scenes. I don't know why my stomach is making that noise. Cause you hungry bitch. I admire his dedication, but I don't think Morbius is the type of movie that requires that level of dedication. The villain in this movie is basically a carbon copy of Morbius, and again, it feels very much like the villain in the original Venom movie. The only difference between the two characters is that the villain doesn't fight his vampiric urges. Which brings me to my next point, Morbius is basically an anti-hero in this, which doesn't seem like the best route for his character. That makes sense. If it was me, I would have really leaned into the Jekyll and Hyde aspect of the character. Because he is basically a regular man who is living with a monster inside of him. So that would open up a lot of horror-like possibilities for this movie. But they gave us a much more tamer version of that and it just feels like a missed opportunity. There were actually two scenes in this movie, one on a ship and one in a hallway that felt like they wanted to go full horror with the idea. And they were decent scenes, but they could have been pushed over the top if they really leaned into the idea. This is rock! I can't get jiggy with this shit! 
Also, a lack of blood in a vampire movie is an issue, and I think this movie could have benefited from having an R rating. I do think there's an interesting story to be told with Morbius. He just needs a character like Blade, for instance, to play off of. There's something to be said about the duality of a half-vampire, half-human character, and I think because they share that, it could make a story between them much more interesting. There's also some campiness to this film as well, and it mostly comes from the villain, who has a very Bully Maguire dance number in this film. I gotta feel like somewhere, Sam Raimi is laughing at Sony once again. Anybody care about what I want? I do. Shut up. Get out. There's also a cliche female damsel in distress character that pretty much adds nothing to the movie other than being a love interest for Morbius. And also Tyrese is in this movie as an extremely serious FBI agent. And I'm sorry, I just can't take him seriously after the whole Instagram crying thing. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> The final act of this movie is typical comic book fare. A big CGI fight that feels like it has no stakes. Stop me if you've heard this before. And yes, there are end credit sequences that everyone seems to be up in arms about. But here's the reality. This movie, just like every other Marvel movie ever, is just setting up a bigger universe down the line, and I don't care. I do think it's a bit more jarring to have a scene like that in Morbius, because it does feel like a self-contained story up until that point, but this is what shared universes do. Everything feels shoehorned into a story where it doesn't belong, and it's a real burden on creativity. And that's why I feel like the whole trend needs to be abolished immediately. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate a bill. Overall, I had the same reaction to Morbius that I have for most comic book movies. It's fine for a one-time watch, but doesn't offer much in the way of rewatchability. That's why I'm giving Morbius the typical rating for this genre, that being the careless Sam Gerard. I don't care! So have you seen Morbius? If you have, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Shut up.